Hello, hello, everyone. You guys are early. Some early birds in the house. Well, you know the drill. Tell us where you're at, where you are calling in from. So glad you guys can join us. All right, we've got Rancho Cucamonga, California, Miami, Georgia. Hi, Ollie. San Antonio. Felice, how you doing in Texas? Oh, my prayers and my heart goes out to every Texas citizen. We got the Bay Area, we got Asheville. Oh good, much better Felice, very good. I'm so glad to hear that. We got Alabama, Dearborn, Michigan. Oh, that's my niece, hey Bianca. <laughs> Washington DC. Very good. And we have Tawana from the DMV. Hello, Miss Tawana. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hey, Cherie. Hair is looking cray cray today. All right. Don't see me pull back, so it's all right. <laughs> oh, goodness. Today has been an interesting day. I've been racing against the clock, as many of you can imagine. Some of you do that yourselves. And uh, yeah, yes. at least I put my, my good blouse and everything on this morning because, you know, I'm like, just in case. But uh, yeah, so we want to say hello to everybody today. Thank you so much, Tawana, for uh, announcing people. You can continue on with announcing where people yeah, are coming I see, from. I see some more coming in. So we've got, the yeah. Bronx. of course, of course, every time the Bronx comes in, I smile. So hello to the boogie down. <laughs> we've got uh, Babette here in YouTube from Ohio, Cleveland. So hello, Babette. I see you. I want to welcome everyone today to the discussion about financial literacy. Uh, it matters. And Ollie King is on. She's backstage right now. So I guess she'll turn on her com computer. And Vince Lane is coming on as well, I guess, any minute uh, in order to have the conversation. Um, oh, Miss Vivian said just came off a of Zoom from nine to five and you're here. Oh, we are honored. Miss Vivian is a, she is the, the MVP yes. of the 10K project. She don't yes. miss one of these lives. <laughs> All right, I'm in. Well, oh, oh, you have Ollie's name. Okay. I thought yeah, that you were Ollie. Updated. <laughs> She's oh, here though. She's here. Oh, is she is here under your name? Or because <laughs> I was looking, I was looking for your name. Anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, we can wanna... change that. You know, oh, there, oh, that. there you go, Ollie. Yeah. yeah Hello, there, everyone. there you guys go. Hello. So Janice is saying Memphis, Tennessee. Snow is gone, but under a boil water order. Oh, First day out oh. since February 10th. Ooh, girl, that's 12 days in the house. Wow. Oh my goodness. I yeah I um definitely want to uh, ditto Tawana and send my prayers and well wishes to not only Texas but um, I know Louisiana was hit I have some family there and you know they they had some issues and struggles and other people across the country have had their struggles so this has been um, this has been a trying past 12 months period for right. all of us. So I'm hoping that we, we get to come out of it and come out of it better. Um, so it is three minutes after the hour. Uh, we have Miss Miriam here from North Carolina. I wanna say hello to you. So uh, 
We want to now get started, and you know what we usually start with. We usually start with a little presentation about what the 10K project is, and then Tawana has some announcements to make, so we're going to give her the floor. And then tonight's conversation is going to be hopefully a, a great conversation with um, Vince and Ali about financial literacy mattering and some of the things that we can do individually and some of the things we can do as a community. So it's going to be a real challenge. At. And uh, if you are a member, they have been here before for our members. They did a four part presentation. And all I can say is you would want to go and see all of those presentations as well. They are in the Knowledge Center. So I'm going to share my screen here really quickly for everyone who is new to the 10k project we are a community of everyday people small dollar investors who invest in black owned businesses it is time for us to take our seats at the table and through the 10k project you can get your seat at the table so businesses are the foundation of any economic uh, society. I'm sure that Vince and Ali can definitely attest to that as well. Uh, they provide jobs, they provide economic stability. If you're running a nonprofit, you usually try to get bigger donors through businesses, etc. Um, they need money to start and grow, and our businesses are less likely or are least likely to be funded. And when we are funded, we're usually funded for every dollar that our counterparts get, we get 33 cents. 33 cents to the dollar of startup funding. Well, what if we, from the ground up, instead of begging people from the top down to help us, um, even though I think they should, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but what if we, from the ground up, start working together in order to fund our own businesses? Um, the other problem is not only do we, as uh, business owners, are we least likely to be funded, but as small uh, investors, by the time you find out about these opportunities, it's usually too late for you to participate because most of the profits have been made. But thanks to something called the Jobs Act of 2012, Black entrepreneurs have another option to get the money that they need from regular people like us. We are called the crowd and this is crowdfunding. So the way that equity crowdfunding works at the 10K project is that entrepreneurs work with an equity crowdfunding portal to raise uh, up to now 1,070,000. In the next couple of weeks, it will be $5 million that can be raised. Uh, every week we feature a black owned business that is raising capital and we do this through something we call a bet on black pitch. Then investors can review the business plan, research the company, something called due diligence. And if you as an individual like that company, you can invest and receive equity or partial ownership in that company. So everything is done on an individual basis. And then if the company makes it big, the crowd shares in the profits. And if not, investors only lose what they put into the company. So we can start funding our own companies, profiting from our own innovation, creating jobs and building black wealth. And that is what the 10K project is all about. So we are the largest community of investors who actively fund black owned businesses using the equity crowdfunding method and via equity crowdfunding campaigns. The ultimate ecosystem that we're building is this. So we're gonna have the entrepreneurs come and do uh, their bet on black pitches. And then a community like us, small dollar investors are able to help fund that company. Those entrepreneurs are usually looking to raise the money because they need goods and services, anything from accountants, attorneys, merchant services, products, etc. Well, wouldn't it be great if we had a database of our members and that we do have is called the expert directory. There are a couple of tweaks happening to it, but I believe that by the end of this week, that should be up and running and available for people to uh, put their information in the expert directory. This is how the black dollar will circulate longer in our community. It starts with us and it circulates longer within the community when we practice group economics and we can do it in a small way doing it this way. 
So we want to invite you to become a member. You can, as a member, attend the Bet on Black pitches. You can be a part of the expert business directory. We have other members only wealth building webinars, everything around uh, buying real estate, tax lien, stock options, uh, Bitcoin, buying businesses. Y'all know that's a big one for me. Uh, we also have peer to peer or community coaching as well. That's what we're going to be doing tomorrow night around the stock options. And we have exclusive content that is going to start running on the Knowledge Center as well. So it's a one time payment lifetime of $100. You can become a member at the 10 kprojectcom And if you are an entrepreneur and you want to learn how to raise the uh, raise up to $5 million for your business. I would say, even if you're thinking about it over the next 12 months, this session is going to be for you. You're able to come learn a lot more about equity crowdfunding, how it's done, how do you qualify for it, should you do it? And then if you choose that piece of it, then also Tawana is going to give a presentation with regards to how to approach the 10K project and be one of our weekly uh, bet on black pitches. So we have something through Eventbrite, Bill Houston, CF101.eventbrite.com. Or if you're a member, just go to your members only um, newsletter newsletter yes thank you our members only newsletter it's been in there for the past couple of weeks now we're also going to probably tomorrow and thursday send out separate emails just announcing this uh last time i checked we had close to 100 people registered and we haven't really uh, put it out there as much as we could we just want to make sure that our community gets to see this information first so um, you can also, it's open to the public, so you are also able to invite people who are entrepreneurs uh, to come and participate in this session. So, Tawana, I am going to hand it off to you because I know you have a couple of announcements as well. Righty. Well, the first thing I want to say is thank you guys for coming tonight. You know, every time you show up, I'm <laughs> so blessed because you could be anywhere. I get emails all day long with everybody having a live tonight at 730 or <laughs> 30, right. So I know there are a lot of options out there. And the fact that you guys choose us week over week, I am honored. So thank you for that. Um, I've got some great news. So Cherie talked about membership, right? And she talked about the Bet on Black Pitches. Guess what? They are going to be starting in March. I'm not going to give you a date. I'm not going to tell you the who. All I'm going to tell you is if you are not a member yet, what are you waiting for? Okay, because now is the time. I know you've been waiting to see what's this 10K project getting ready to do, what they about. Well, now you know what we're about and we're about to make it happen. So we have some wonderful entrepreneurs lined up. Actually, I'm gonna call them founders because they worked hard at building these businesses. We've got some wonderful founders that are lined up um, starting in March and they cannot wait to talk to you about their businesses and their future plans. And I know you guys can't wait to listen to that information and then make the determination on if you want to invest your black dollars with them. If your green dollars, your blue dollars, whatever color your dollars are, as long as the check clears. Hmm. <laughs> yes, because you can, if you don't live in the United States, you can participate. Right, absolutely. Yes. So I want you guys, if you are not already a member, I want you guys to really, really consider becoming a member before we start these pitches because you don't want to miss out, right? That's the whole point of the 10K project, right? We, we don't want to be left behind anymore. We want a seat at the table. Well, guys, this is the table. This is it. And a $100 lifetime membership fee will get you a seat at that table to see these presentations. As you guys know, you know we've been you know, doing this now for almost a year. And we've got a lot of people who continue to support us. Um, and I won't share the name because I'm not sure if, if, if she wanted her name revealed, but we had a woman approach us and she wanted to give us a donation. Um, and we, of course, were like, you know, we don't really want a donation because this is a for-profit business and that didn't feel right. But what we said was, how about we take that donation and we pass it on to potential members? So what we are wanting to do this evening all of you people have been like, I don't know, I'm not sure. We're going to give a 50% discount this evening to the first 12 
people who are not already members, right? So if you're not already a member, the first 12 people will get 50% off. So that means your membership is $50 to get a seat at this table, right? And you can email info at 10K Project, excuse me, at the 10K, I always forget the V, at the 10K Project.com. Um, the first 12 people, the email, you know, that they would like to benefit from this discount, will get the discount and then Cherie will, will respond to you and, and take care of getting you the discount code and all of that. But thank you so much to the member that donated these funds. Again, Cherie, I don't know if she didn't want her name revealed or not. Right. So I just want to say thank you. And, um, you know, we have people out there who are supporting us and they want to see us win. And mm -hmm. this is this is a way that they that they're helping out. And so I just say thank you to anybody that's that's in our corner. Right. Um, yeah. So and, and I will admit that she is not black, you know, so the, if we listen to the news, we think that everybody's against us. And, and that's not the case. We have we have allies. We have allies. We have really good ones. And they approach me and they'll say certain things and how can I help and things like that. So um, it is about us coming together and our voices are being heard with regards to some of the lack of opportunities. So we want to level the playing field with regards to our businesses being able to be funded. And then we want to go after some of the bigger opportunities. So Tawana, if um, if you have more announcements, I'll I'll reserve my thought, but I wanted to piggyback. I just have one more thing. You know, last week I talked about the SEC guidelines on being able to participate in crowdfunding events and how the SEC has some financial limitations and maximums that they've put in place. We want you to, I want to just share my screen really quickly so that you can see where to go because I want all of you to go here on your free time and read the regs for yourself, right? It's important that you read these regs and understand them because you're the one that's going to be doing the calculation. So as you can see here, the SEC has given some guidelines on annual income and net worth that then allows you to determine how much you can annually from invest in a crowdfunding campaign. And they do that across all crowdfunding platforms, right? So as I'm bringing you, or as 10K, 10K Project is bringing you these amazing founders, they're going to be on different platforms, right? So how much, you, how much you invest in them is to be added up across all the platforms. And so please go to the sec.gov's website and look up this criteria because you're going to need to know that. We don't want you getting in any IRS trouble because you try to invest too much, right? Or you think you can't invest as much as you actually can, right? All right, I just wanted to share that. I'm gonna stop sharing and Cherie, you can go ahead. And if you would please put that link in the chat because people are asking for that link, please. Absolutely. Perfect. All right. So two more things and then we're going to bring Vince and Ali up. The first is that um, piggybacking off of what I was saying, you know, with regards to uh, some of the things that, that I would like to see within the group. We talked about the three different groups of people, the entrepreneurs, the product and service providers, and the investors kind of coming together in order to create this ecosystem. Well, we are looking at, okay, number one is how do we start funding our own companies? Number two is how do we then launch our companies out there in order to get more contracts with large companies um, to do business with the government, you know, to get more of a market share, et cetera. And um, somebody that I know from my military organization joined something called the Billion Dollar Roundtable. And this all ties in because as, as we start funding our entrepreneurs, there's uh, I want to say hundreds of billions of dollars that are available in contracts with regards to these Fortune 500 organizations. So Trinette is coming to talk about that. These are some of the caliber 
of people that we have coming in. Even if you're an investor, being able to come hear those things and then as you hear pitches, being able to think, oh yeah, that person really needs to make sure that they are you know, um, connected with some of the other people that we've had within the 10K project. This is how we all can win. OK, uh, the second thing is that uh, Tawan and I have been working um, more so me on the, the physical piece of it. But we've been working on the equity crowdfunding 101 training and I showed it to Tawan on Friday. It's almost done. We want to give props to a gentleman named Brian Belly from Crowdwise, who uh, told us that we were able to take his um, information and um, and, and uh, add some cultural references and just information for us so that you know we're able to um, to to have that information be in a way that in a format that um, I don't want to say that we understand but it's just a way that uh, that relatable. works with us that's more yeah, relatable. relatable exactly more relatable so for the next two Mondays we're going to do equity crowdfunding 101 training. OK, so be prepared for that. These are free. Invite Lottie Dottie and everybody if they're thinking about it. They've been on the fence, whatever. These next two sessions are probably going to be the sessions that they want to come to in order to learn more about it. We're going to talk about um, you know, things like stages, different stages of companies, um, estimated return on investment, uh, valuation, all of those things that you hear about. Sometimes they seem like fancy terms, but Brian's done a great job of breaking them down. And we're going to talk about those things over the next two weeks. So you want to be at the Monday sessions, the Fireside Chats for the next two weeks. We'll also be going over the due diligence process, right? So yes. what questions should you be asking these founders yes. when they come to present to you, right? Yes. Because they're going to be very attractive and their product mm -hmm. is going to be amazing. We still have to ask questions because this is an investment, right? Yes. This is not a donation. This is not a gift. This is an investment. And so before we invest our money, we need to do all the research that we possibly can. And the difference between you going on the platform and just seeing maybe their two minute video, right? Where they talk about the project, you get to ask them your questions live and in person here on Zoom. So it's, yeah. it's, it's much, they're not gonna talk to you for just the two minute, it's not your normal two minute pitch. No. They're going to have dialogue with these founders. We're gonna yeah. spend some quality time with them. They're gonna answer all the questions and then that'll help you be able to make wiser, smart decisions. Right. So we have 22 frequently asked questions that professional investors ask their um, ask people who are pitching them. So we're going to go over that as well. Thank you so much, Tawana, for reminding me about that. So there's going to be a lot of content over the next two weeks. You want to make sure that you're in the place. So with that, we want to welcome our two guests here tonight, Vince Lane, Ali King. They are here from Primerica. Um, you know, full disclosure, I used to be a part of Primerica. I, I left on good terms. Um, I just had a very busy schedule at the time, but I, I've always liked Primerica, the organization, and I'm so glad that we have, you know, Vince and Ali here to talk with us about financial literacy. So tonight we wanted to do something that was more of a chat um, with, with the two of them. But before we get started with chatting about financial literacy, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about the two of you and some of the work you're doing in the community and the mission you have around financial literacy? Absolutely. Um, I must definitely uh, thank you all again, not only for allowing us to participate here, but just the mission that 10K Project has in its, of itself. Uh, the whole notion of, of financial empowerment and, and education and exposure is critical uh, to moving things up. And what, what, what the young folks say, leveling up, right? Uh -huh. We got to take it to the next <laughs> level. And, and that's the only way it occurs. We don't know what we don't know. Mm -hmm. And so it matters not what income, what education, what, what, what zip code you live in, right? What side of the tracks? 
if we're not exposed and aware, how can we then move forward and take things to another level? So, you know, kudos to you all. And, and, and I'm glad you spoke uh, even about the due diligence and vetting of those uh, uh, new ventures that, that are being you know, presented uh, because that matters, you know? And, and so we have to uh, be in an alignment with the process, if you will. And it, and it allows us to, uh, to, to not experience the horror stories. You know, because uh, things do go south, okay, with respect to different things if we're not following the process that takes place. Now, to that end, when we do engage in the process, when we do follow what uh, those that have done uh, things of that nature and, and have gone before us, oh, the outcome is what it is. And, and it is called uh, 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 what? Um, growth, financial growth and, and expo or expansion if I you know, may say, which, which then transitions, in my opinion, to legacy, okay? And, and moving things generationally, and that's what needs to take place. We gotta you know, stop having folks start from square one, you know, generation after generation. Why is that the case, right? And then and, and, and if we talk about our community in particular, I know this is an open forum, it's not regular, you know, uh, 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 just for African-Americans, people of color, but, but the point is, uh, we, we have not been in the mainstream, if you will, with respect to money. You know, the actual dollar itself is not the issue. That is not, we make money. Mm -hmm. The question is, what are we doing with our money? What, 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 what leverage are we allowing it to have? And so, uh, you know, I can go on on that deal, man, yeah, <laughs> right? But, but it's just, this, it, it, it makes all the difference in the world. And that's exactly why uh, Ali and myself actually have, have engaged in, you know, uh, um, being in, in direct partnership with Primerica. Uh, matter of fact, this is year June. I, you know, I still have to pinch myself. It'll, it'll be year mm -hmm. 31 that I've been uh, engaged with the business, uh, you know, transition from an IT career, uh, working initially part time, which is a phenomenal transition, uh, being able to learn the business, understand things and then transition just as people do with any side hustle that now becomes the main hustle, right? <laughs> and, and actually uh, uh, moving that towards uh, the, the whole notion of having my own broker agency. And that's been the case since 1997. And so uh, I've got, you know, office in Chicago and Atlanta and just, you know, representatives all over the place. And, and, and just as an FYI, uh, Primerica representatives, vice presidents in particular, uh, have to have a brick and mortar operation, just like uh, real estate, that broker that has part-time and full-time real estate representatives working with them, st strictly related to uh, regulatory requirements, right? The same thing applies in the financial industry with respect to investments, insurance, and things of that nature. So that brick and mortar office uh, is in play uh, by those vice presidents, which there are 6,000 of us across the country. And so uh, Ali is in our training program. We definitely look forward to her, you know, transitioning and, and, and having her own broker agency because it's about birthing people out of our offices so they then can, can have the same kind of, of outcome where we're, we're, you know, creating equity in our efforts and not just collecting pay stubs. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that matters. It, it truly does, whether it's full time or part time. We got to get in a position where we're building equity in our effort, not just collecting. Yeah, paper. I think we need both. I think that that's Absolutely. part of the 10K project. And yeah. what I'm so you know passionate about is, you know, I have my full time business. That's right. Um, now I'm doing this here with Tawana. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. But then, you know, the rich have little bits of ownership in a lot of different Absolutely. things. Absolutely. You know, and some of that stuff is, and we'll talk about this next week, some of that stuff is like dividend stocks and tax liens and things that pay you, you know, within, let's say, a three to six month period. And then other things are those long term things that if they take off, it could be a big hit for you. So, uh, Ali, I definitely want to bring you in the conversation yes, as well. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, I mean, I've, I've been in and out of the business. I've been a client for 20 something years now. So I've been in this industry for over 20 years now. Um, but I am very blessed and thankful that I have a business partner that's been in the game much longer than me and steady the whole time, you know. So he's got, he brings a lot of um, 
wisdom and knowledge to to the table and um and and that's to my benefit thank you and, and to the benefits of a lot of families because we help mm -hmm. a lot of families and um the reason that I love Primerica so much is because not only um, do we have a lot of value that we bring to the community, you know, with, you know, with our mission, because our mission, we stay close to our mission, which is, you know, making sure that people are properly protected and debt free and that they do see that you can be financially independent. That is a, a fact, you know, and um, and that we all ta always talk about facts and principles. And then we stay transparent. You know, we, we let them know every step of the way what we're doing and how we're doing it. And then to top it all off and put the icing and the cherry on top, we do it complimentary. Everybody loves stuff at no charge, you know? And so we, we give that to them. And, and once we, you know, once we show them what we have to offer and they see that they can maximize on what they already have, they love it. Yeah. And I love you too. And I love bringing it to you. And so that's why I'm so glad that I was able to bring Vince and Sheree together and we were able to do this. So I'm very happy that everybody chose to come out like Tawana said earlier. That that made me smile and I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Everybody. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So let's talk a little bit then about financial literacy because we hear the term all the time, but what does that really mean? And well, I'm going to ask you one question at a time. What what does that really mean for us in terms of our everyday movements, financial literacy? So, and I guess we'll bounce back and forth here. Uh, matter of fact, um, three, we didn't get a chance to, to talk directly prior to, but uh, I know you mentioned there might be an, an opportunity to, to bring in some of those facts and principles and then have uh, the actual conversation. Yeah. I think we, it'll provide yeah, a little foundation yeah. for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that Does, 10 that minutes? How, how long? Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah why don't we do that? Then? Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we okay. do that? And then we can follow yeah. up with questions. Very and, good. Um, and, and Ali, I have to say Bernard and YouTube is saying hello to you. So I don't okay, know if you know Bernard. Bernard. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I appreciate that. Good, good. <laughs> And, 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 you know, so I, we, we've had an opportunity, for those who hadn't had an opportunity, well, it was members only, I believe, uh, that participated in the four sessions we brought forth. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and they dealt with uh, specific fundamental foundational items about this thing called money. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting. And that's why we kind of, we rephrase it related to financial literacy matters. And it, and it absolutely does. You know, uh, money is one of the only things we get OK, that that doesn't come with an owner's manual. It doesn't come with a how to book. Right. Uh, and, and so how, how do we maximize the effort of it if we don't know the rules as to how things move forward and transpire? So uh, it, it really makes a difference. And so the, the foundational things, we, you know, with respect to um, the state of affairs right in this country financially and 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 how we're able to accumulate wealth eliminate debts and those things building a financial house and making sure that we have a game plan to move it forward and position our dollars where it will uh, make a difference and, and, and I know Sheree you mentioned uh, the notion of uh, um, you know wealthy people having various other, ways of generating income and so on. Well, that's still multiple streams of income. It's about not having one stream, multiple streams of income that generate income, right? So then we're able to leverage uh, and position. Most people want three things, time, money, and freedom. The problem is most times when we've got one source of income, it minimizes the amount of time we have. And a lot of times, if we got a whole bunch of time, I mean, we ain't got enough income, okay? Right. So, right. And, and, and in either case, I'll be free. So when we're able to, to generate and have positions that make a difference with respect to that, it, it just changes the ball game altogether. And so mm -hmm. uh, to that end, we'll, we'll uh, just, like I said, about 12 minutes, and then we'll come back in and, 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 and kind of tie it all together here. So yeah, Ali and I will uh, move it forward. I'll share the screen. Uh, Ali, I think you'll be able to click on and, and get control after things begin. So uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh -oh, uh -oh. <laughs> I am, uh, there. Let me share the screen and then click on my item here. All right, here we go. 
Okay, so as we mentioned uh, about um, the, the fact that how money works and that financial literacy matters and the notion that we get this money ranks right on up there with oxygen. It, it isn't everything, but it has to do with everything, right? And, and so if we don't know how to maximize it, it definitely has a stranglehold, not only in our current circumstance, but future and generations, okay? And so to that end, uh, Ms. Ali, we, we, we like to bring forth a, a little something to get you thinking about the, the, the impact of what we do with the money and the fact that compounding effort of money makes all the difference in the world. So Ali, why, why don't you go ahead and, and, and you know, talk to us about how that impact uh, of compounding takes place. All righty. Okay, quick. Oh, it's not giving me that one yet. There you go, you should have it. Okay. Should be coming along here. Yeah, just click again, there you go. There we go, all right. So we're gonna give you this mind jogging. A million dollars or a penny compounding daily? Let me know in the chat. We know everybody say cash is king, right? <laughs> so are you going to take the, the penny or the million dollars? Would you rather have a million dollars cash or the result of a penny doubling every day for 30 days? Oh, man, I see some smarty pants over there. I see penny, penny, penny coming up. So let's check it out. Let's look at the facts, you guys. So in that first week, we're going to take this penny and we're going to watch it double. Every day is doubling, doubling and doubling, right? And at the end of that week, we got a whole 64 cent. Don't get too excited, okay? We, we just starting it out. But in that second week, we're at $81.92. Now, that person that picked that million dollars, I know it's a couple of them out there. I see a few. They, they smiling, they, they che smiling cheek to cheek, right? They going to the bank laughing at us, right? Okay, well, let's see what happens at the end of that third week though. All right, at the end of the third week, we're a little over $10,000. Mm, got a little quiet now, right, right? <laughs> so then at the end of that fourth week, we not only got a million dollars, but we went over it, 1.3 million. We're a little over that, right? That's phenomenal. And we still got some days left. So here we are at the 29th day, and as a result of that 29th day doubling, here we got $5 million on the 30th. Now, that's great, right? And then the, the what they call it, the coup de grace? <laughs> we at $11 million at the end of the month. Now, if that's not an exciting fact to you, then <laughs> wake up, because it is, all right? <laughs> all right. So yes, you can. You can get out of debt. That's possible. And we can build savings and investments. And we can get on the path to financial independence. Now, we do have to talk about today's financial realities, guys. Okay? The top 20% of wealthy Americans own 93% of the nation's stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. 82% of global wealth is going to the wealthiest 1%. Mm. Most Americans do not even understand money and how it works. And then the wealth gap has grown exponentially over the past 40 years. So we have to ask ourselves, why are people having so many financial challenges? Well, most people today, they do not get a financial education. They're not having these conversations like the ones we're having today, right? And then they don't have a financial game plan something to let them know what they should be doing with this money from A to Z. And then lastly, they do not have a financial coach. We got our life coach, our spiritual coach, and you know, the Super Bowl just ended, right? We have our sports coaches for all of the sports teams, but everybody forget about the financial coach. We need one for that too. So these are some serious challenges for middle income families, right? Right. So that directly relates to the theory of decreasing responsibility. Now, this explains that in the early years, you may need a lot of coverage. And the coverage that we're speaking of is life insurance, okay? In the early years, you may not have a lot of money. And why you don't have a lot of money? Because you're taking care of business. You got your young children, you got high debt, 
you got a house mortgage and the loss of income would be devastating, okay? That's just a fact. And then in the later years though, you better have some money, right? Because in the earlier years you needed that coverage, but in the later years you may not have coverage. And why? Because you retire now, you, you, your children are grown, you got low debt, you've probably done paid off your house, but retirement income is needed now. So what we do is we make sure that we address two things, dying too soon and living too long. That's what we're addressing. So what we need to make sure that we have is a financial house. We must build this financial house. And of course, with any structure, be it your house, your condo, your, your, your place of employment, skyscrapers, all of them need a foundation, right? A strong foundation. And why? Because we're building all this stuff on top of it. It's got to stay strong. If it doesn't, we're in trouble, right? So where we start with the foundation of our financial house is protecting your income. We have to protect the thing that buys all the little things that we like, right? And takes care of our family. We're the money makers. And we have to make sure that we put in place that emergency fund and wills. Then next, we make sure that we pay off debt, accelerate that debt and get rid of it. And then retire with dignity because we love to tell everybody, no one is interested in rehirement, okay? Everybody want to retire and be done with it. Nobody's trying to go back to work. And then of course, when it's applicable, okay? College savings has to be put in place. And then last but not least, don't forget yourself, put your goals and dreams in there, okay? But so on a scale from one to 10, 10 being the highest, let me know in the chat over here, how would you rate your desire? I'm talking about your desire now to become properly protected, debt-free and financially independent. And, and while you're saying that, what about your loved ones, your colleagues, your friends? What, what about them? What do you think their desire would be? I'm seeing a lot of tens over there. That's great. That's great. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. So next, the bottom line is people don't plan to fail. They just fail to plan. That, that's always the bottom line, you know? But we have a solution to that. And our solution is called a financial needs analysis. We call it an FNA. And basically what it is, is it's a customized plan. It's customized because everybody's scenario, everybody's lifestyle is different, right? So we can't do any kind of cookie cutter type deal here. It has to be in detail to you and your family specific needs, right? And then it has to be confidential because we work in a licensed industry. So just like a doctor to client or a um, attorney to client privileges, we extend those same privileges to our clients. And then, like I talked about earlier, it's complimentary, no charge for this program. And we provide that so that it helps you and your family to get, your, get to your goals and your dreams. That's, that's the whole point of it. And so it works just like the GPS in your car or uh, on your tablet or on your phone, you know, we call it a financial GPS, okay? <laughs> it helps you find answers to important questions. So, you know, when you put that address in that GPS and, and here you are, you bopping along to the music or you eating your favorite food and it said to make a right, you didn't turn left. What does it do? It recalculates for you, right? So that's what our GPS does. Our financial GPS, when we make those mistakes or those bumps in the road come on your financial portfolio, it foresees this and it lets you know, hey, you know, you, you got a little trouble here but this is the way that we can move forward. This is the way we can maximize in this area. Or sometimes it tells you, hey, you're all good. And, but we need to know those things. That's important to know. So Vince, let us know exactly what is the benefit of planning? Yeah, planning makes all the difference in the world. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it, it truly determines the outcome. Many times if we don't know what the, the end result of our actions are, it doesn't give us the same incentive to do what we need to do. So when we know exactly if we do X, Y, Z, that uh, you know, a particular outcome is gonna occur, it changes the ball game. And so here's a question, should we invest or save? And there's a definite difference. You know, investment is like a, uh, a multiplication and saving is like addition. You know, why I say addition? Because 
plus five is 10, right? But 10 plus five is 15. But if you look at it in, in, in multiplication with respect to investing, five times five is, is, is 25. And then 25 times five is 125. Saving will never catch up with investing. Multiplication is always going to outperform addition. Well, there's another statistic here that 60% of Americans have less than $1,000 in savings, especially in these times we're in. That's, that's got people stressed out big time, right, with this uncertainty we're experiencing. 40% of, of folks have less than $25,000 in savings and investments put away for a time and another issue. So we have to address those things. And how do we accumulate money? How do we activate that compounding effect that, that Ali illustrated earlier, right? There's something called the Rule 72. Those who, who know of Rule 72, give us a, a thumbs up. Or not necessarily say, oh, thumbs up if you're on Zoom. But if not in the chat, say, hey, you know, uh, give me a one if you know about the Rule 72, or two if you don't. Well, this is a very simple concept that directly relates to the growth of money. And so when we talk about money growing, uh, um, the way the rule works, and by the way, Albert Einstein developed the concept. If you divide the interest rate into the amount of money we, that is the interest rate that you're earning for money, whether it's a savings account, an investment, CD, whatever it may be, take that interest, divide it into 72, and the answer is the number of years it takes money to double. So real quick here. If you had $10,000 in each of these situations, three, six, and 12%, well, three goes into 72 how many times? 24 times. That 10,000, in regards of what we do, has been employed by the interest rate and it doubles in 24 years. Three going into 72, 24 times. That's the good news, right? The bad news is going to take another 24 years to go to 40,000, right? Now, and don't get me wrong, something's better than nothing any day, but that's, that's, that's not all that exciting after 48 years. Well, at 6%, you might think that it's double the outcome. Well, six goes into, into 72, 12 times. So every 12 years, the same money is doubling and growing. It's four times the outcome. Well, at 12%, you know, it, it, you might think it might be four times. Since this doubling was four times, well, actually it's nine. It's dramatically more. That same 10,000 at 12%, 12 goes into 72 every six I mean, six times. So every six years, this money is compounding, growing, and doubling. In the same period of time, we got $2.5 plus million. Not only does that impact our own circumstance, but generationally, if we continue to do the right thing with our money. So the question becomes this. How do we win the game if we don't know the rules? Again, going back to that exposure piece, right? Uh, and, and then the thing about it, banks and insurance companies have no incentives to telling us this. Matter of fact, that bank, right, the average interest rate in a bank is less than 1%. Matter of fact, it's 0 0.05 as a national average as of last year, right? Now, the thing about it, we don't deal with the calculated 0 0.05. We'll just say 1%, give them the benefit of the doubt. One goes into 72, how many times? 72 times. That same 10,000, 72 years later, is 20 grand. How does anybody accumulate wealth with that kind of outcome? Yet the bank is getting paid because they... You know, credit cards are well beyond 12%, right? And then who would benefit from who? Everybody, not some folks. Shouldn't we have learned in school? Absolutely. So we need to share this information with family, friends, and who, who need to be, if we don't, how do they get it? They're not participating in these kind of things, right? So it's incumbent upon us to get the word out and share that message of accumulating wealth. And then people get a little nervous about investing many times because of, you know, we hear the horror stories, right? Well, there's a cycle of, of things that occur and, it, and it's kind of like the season in, in the year, right? So so here I said, man, wow, I made the right decision as the money is growing. You know, we talked about that that crowdsourcing and all that, right? So you invest in the company, man, it's doing good and it's at the peak of the thing. That's kind of like, you know, the peak of the market is like the summertime. Okay, in terms of the season in the year. Well, when things start tailing off, we start getting a little nervous and we go into winter time, right? It's the worst time of the year. And it goes down, matter of fact, we second guess, oh no, what did I do, right? However, when, when the market is down, that's the best opportunity because things are on sale. And guess what? In the, the, in the scheme of cycles, it goes right back, just like the seasons. After winter time, you go into spring. And we, we listen. We can't wait for spring to come around, especially for those of you, us that are up north, right, and, 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 and even south, right? It, it still ain't like it is during the rest of the year in the wintertime. So it, we get excited about when that process is changing, and it goes through those cycles basically any 10 to 15-year period of time. 
each of those cycles repeat themselves. So it matters as we go through our investment phases of life, early on, 18 to 55, we got to be accumulating money. This is the accumulation phase. We got to grow it. Yes, we can grow wealth over a period of time, right? And then when we hit that between 55 and 65, we got to pull off a little bit, kind of tail off from a growth perspective, but now we need to go into more conservative and protect what we've grown, right? And not have as many fluctuations up and down as, as things are taking place during the accumulation phase. But ultimately, it's about the distribution phase. When we go into retirement, we got to have some money, okay? That's an issue. We talked to, uh, Ali mentioned, not wanting to go into rehirement. We got to avoid that situation, right? But too many folks are, that's their experience nowadays because we haven't accumulated money. And so there's four ways of earning income. We're coming to a close here. So, so with respect to accumulating in multiple streams of income, there's four ways of, way of how money is generated. It's referred to as the cash flow quadrant. This is a concept that Robert Kiyosaki, he actually wrote a book called Cash Flow Quadrant and Rich Dad Poor Dad, phenomenal books. But, but these four cycles, employee, self-employed, we know about those, right? Those are particularly called wage earners. Then we have uh, in, in business owners and investors, right? Where money is being generated by profits, okay? That business owner is generating income whether they're participating or not. That investor money is being generated whether they're engaged in the process or not, right? If we're not involved uh, uh, as a wage earner, we can't generate income. That's why these things are significant. And that's why, you know, 10K, I just excited about this kind of environment being available for people. And, and, and so where are most people? Most people are definitely on the side of um, employee and self-employed. Matter of fact, 95% of our society is there. And, and then only 5% of folks on the business owner and, and, and investor side of the house, which is a, a, a challenge, okay? And so it's all about generating multiple streams of income. You no longer can we just, you know, really do things on one income and we got to be expanding the impact and leveraging the dollars and doing some things. It's a necessity nowadays, right? And here's just a little snippet of different companies or uh, types of, uh, of, of um, what, uh, uh, means of generating income. Like you can see all kinds of things out here, right? There, as a matter of fact, uh, I think Cherie put an item in the, um, Information warehouse or however you... Yeah, it's in that. the Knowledge Center. Right, yes, the Knowledge is. Center. That's what it is, right? So you can, you know, uh, hit some of those. But I would totally be remiss if I didn't mention, you know, the fact that Primerica is, is the leading provider of, of middle income uh, uh, financial services providing it to middle income. We we actually have championed that cause for some 44 years now. We just had our 44th anniversary, uh, and we've got 135,000 licensed individuals throughout every state in the country: Canada, Guam, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. We are also a New York Stock Exchange company. And have over five million families that we insure lives and investment firms and, and, and things of that nature. And and we provide all these a host of services uh, from every aspect. These are the partners we actually have, right? We serve in, in a very similar capacity as Walmart and, and, and Amazon. We're, you know, we have direct partnerships. We're not the middleman. We're directly in, in alliance with these companies and providing the services that they provide. And so with that, um, that that's who we are, how things take place, and the significance that, that comes into play with respect to uh, our program and how we deliver financial literacy and then being able to have access. Because it's one thing to have the information, but if we don't have access, we still got another problem. So we bring both of those to the table and allow people to, to maximize the effort of that dollar. So on that note, uh, what, what uh, you know, questions, I know you had one off the bat, yeah. but yeah. hopefully that so provided the foundation for the discussion. Yes, you did. And okay, so we have a couple of people who, um, are saying one person said they're 55 mm -hmm. and they feel it's too late. Uh, we had another person say, why do we have to wait until 72 to retire? Yeah. Um, let's, so let's, let's deal with both of those. You can deal with them together or separately. But sure. I do think that there are a lot of people who are, let's say, north of 50 mm -hmm. who you know, look at your rule of 72 and go, I blew it. What do we do? What do you do? Yes. Well, so first and foremost, I want to mention that that's why we need to get a head start. So we got to share this information with those that are coming behind us so they don't have the same challenge as we move forward. However, it's not all doom and gloom. No, 
as long as we got time on the clock, we can reposition where we are today and still make it better. If we don't do anything, it, 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 listen, there's no opportunity for change, right? And so no matter where, what position we're in currently, we can move forward and make adjustments. And it doesn't matter how much money, right? Matter of fact, we're in a unique position that we're able to provide our services for as little as $25 a month. A person can participate in a mutual fund and have access just as somebody who has a thousand dollars a month to invest, right? So it allows the same outcome uh, with respect to return. However, devising that plan, that financial GPS, allows us to make some adjustments and realize what we're working with, right? Believe it or not, we find through that process all kind of other ways because we are generating income. It's just a matter of what adjustments do we need to take to maximize that income and start going down the road to financial success. And uh, at my last comment on that, it, it doesn't matter how far down the highway you're going. If it's not in the direction you, you, you find out, man, I, I'm going north and I should have been going south. I don't care how long you went north. You got to change. You got to come off, make a new turn, right? Get back on going in the direction that you need to head. And so it doesn't matter how far we've been. We can make adjustments and have a better outcome as a result. Of it. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll give uh, an example that if the doctor came to you and said, you have diabetes and if you don't stop eating sweets, we're going to cut up your legs in two weeks. You know, okay. would you say it's too late or would you say, OK, I got to I got to make this adjustment in some sort of way, deal with the short term. I don't know, like sugar cravings, because that's me. Right. The short term <laughs> sugar cravings <laughs> and figure out, you know, how to do this. Um, right. The other the other thing that I will say is that's one of the reasons why the 10K project we had people in the beginning like you should just focus on the bet on black pitches. And I was saying, no, we need to focus on people as whole, holistic people and not just, you know, we're going to fund entrepreneurs. So that's part of the reason why within 10K, you have a lot of stuff that is uh, free in terms of webinars where we talk about different side hustles that you could start, you know, uh, increasing your income through your main career. How do you get your LinkedIn together? All of those things are a part of the process as well. So um, I, I wrote a note here. Uh, there's there's a saying, it's not much, how much money you make, it's how much money you keep. Mm -hmm. I kind of disagree with that. I think it's how much money you make and how much money you you keep, yeah. you know, and, 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 and some of us are, you know, you, you take your expenses down to a certain level and you just can't take them down anymore. There's a certain point where you may say, you know what, I need to figure out how I can bring more income into the household. And God gave all of us gifts. This is the last thing I'll say, and then I'll open it up to Tawan and Ali. Uh, God, God gave all of us gifts. And you know, there's a woman that I, I often talk about here who makes seven figures a year as a life coach, helping people get through very difficult um, experiences that they're having. Her story was that she rolled over one morning, her husband was laying dead next to her, and she took that and became a life coach and now helps people get through tough parts of their lives. If you're the friend where everyone's coming to you with their problems, how do you turn that into a gift that can help you make money, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, and Lord have mercy is asking, do you guys support crypto? Yes. Yes, we do. So <laughs> Tawana, Ali, I'll open it up to the two of you. I'll just, I'll just add that, you know, to, to that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 51. I think I'm 51. I think I'm 51 years old. Looking good, girl. Okay. Looking good. Hey, now. You know, I'm one of those people who got a late start. You know, I was a, a single parent. So for any single parent out there, you know that the struggle is real, right? We, we move a little slower. I make a good living from my day job, but it was never, um, investing was never a priority for me in my younger age because I was trying to put food on the table, right? And keep a roof mm -hmm. over our head. And so you you have to start, once you know better, you do better, right? We'll start with that, right? Yeah. 
And, and then you have to start figuring out, educating yourself enough to figure out what's a smart first step to get back on track, right? Mm -hmm. For me, it was, it was paying off debt, right? Trying to, trying to get as debt free as possible so that I could have that disposable income to be able to then invest. Uh, and so, you know, every, everyone's best next step is going to be different based on your circumstances. But I think doing something is better than doing nothing, right? And if now you're 55 and you're just starting, the fact that mm -hmm. you're wanting to start now, you know, mm -hmm. my, my hat goes off to you, applauds to you. Don't be discouraged. Um, yeah, the, the rule of 72 is pretty cool. Like, well, like if you were in, in, in utero, right? If you were like in, you know, in the womb trying to save, that would be really cool. But to Vince's point, we have generations after us that we can teach that rule of 72 now, right? And so, so that they have a fighting chance where maybe some of us didn't because we didn't know about it until we were 55. So I think that's the takeaway for me is, you know, get some information. We, we had Holly, what was Holly's last name, Cherie? I read the CPA. Holly, the, 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 she came on with the financial literacy for the children, right? Holly Reed. Holly, Holly Reed. And I talked about those flashcards I bought, right? <laughs> but she, you know, she teaches financial literacy to the babies. We have to do that. We have to make that a priority, right? Have those discussions. Teach them to save, right? When they get money for Christmas or for their birthday, don't take them right to the mall. Don't do that. Try to figure out how we can make an education lesson out of this money that they just received mm -hmm. and then do something strategic with it. It doesn't mean they don't get to have a little fun with a small piece of it because that's life, right? We should reward ourselves. But then mm -hmm. with, with the majority of it, have them do something that they can track and follow. We see stories in the news now about people buying stocks and gifting it to their children and watching the children follow the stock market and teaching them about that process. We just we have to do things differently, right? We know that what we've been doing is not working. That's why we're all here. That's why I joked earlier about there being 17 financial literacy groups on tonight, right? Because we know there's a need in this community. We just have to start doing something different than we've done. Our parents did the best they could, right? I know I've told you guys, mine told me to get a job, work there till I retired and you know, be the best I can and, and climb up the ladder. And life will be wonderful after that. What they didn't say was jobs are going to stop giving pension plans, right? So, so that plan is out the window, right? That they didn't they didn't tell me that. Oh, unless there wasn't a pension plan, then you probably should leave that job every two to three years and get a new one so your salary can increase. They didn't give that lesson. We know more now. We have to start having these discussions with our children. We've brought to you guys so many advisors and specialists that have said conversations when they were young is what changed their life, right? We've heard that over and over again on this platform, right? My parents taught me about this. So I bought a house when I was 19. My parents taught me about this. I had my first business at 21. We need to start sharing this information more plentifully and, and, and more globally with our families, nieces, nephews, cousins, all of them. Don't, don't just talk to your sons and daughters, talk to, to the whole family. We have to change the trajectory, excuse me, the trajectory of our lives. And only we can do that. Only we can do that. And we got to start now. Absolutely. You know, real quick before Ali jumps in, uh, related to that rule of 72 aspect, uh, that is directly related to the interest being earned on an investment. And, and many times, you know, we, we're not having the, the knowledge about how to buy stocks. I don't know, Tim K has all kinds of people on that give, you know, instructional, you know, tips on that kind of stuff. But just FYI, your, your 401k, if you have access to it, they all use mutual funds. Mutual funds are even available outside of 401k. Mutual funds have been used in this country since 1924. Growth mutual funds in particular in any 10 year period of time have as an average over 10 years has historically since 1924 in any 10 year period have averaged between 10 and 12% return. So at 10%, 
right? That means that money is doubling every seven years. So even if we have 10 or 15 years before we hit that golden age for retirement or whatever, and even thereafter, we still have to, this is another point too. We, we tend to say, hey, you know, the, the money in the bank is safe, right? Well, if we're getting less than 1% and inflation is at three, what's happening to the power of our money? The purchasing power of the money is going backwards. We're losing money every day we got it in there. We have to maintain inflation, let alone go ahead of it. And so we got to position those dollars uh, in that kind of regard. So just FYI on that. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Ms. Ali, you, you have it. something you want to you want to put in there? Actually, Tawana and uh, Vince, they, they covered everything, man. <laughs> Sorry, really, I, mean, you know, I got a little preachy there. I'm sorry. No, no, it's fine. No, you know, and I mean, and it doesn't matter. Like, you know, we we talk to Vince all the time. We'd be like, oh my gosh, we've heard this over and over and over again. But you know what? As you hear it over and over and over again, your mind just, I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it, but it just opens up and it just starts receiving and just getting different perspectives on things, you know? And so mm -hmm. once you, what they say, once you know better, you do better. Yeah. Once you have those little aha moments, act on it. Right. And it, right. Does. Yeah. And no it doubt, does not no matter doubt. if you 16 or 66. The thing is, is that just like that GPS, when it see you and done something wrong, it don't matter if it's in the beginning of your journey, the middle or the end. It corrects it, right? Mm -hmm. Do the same thing. It's your life. You got control of it. Take a, take the wheel, you know, and, and do what you need to do. Because, I mean, really, guys, there is no excuse for just letting money just sit or just letting things just get away out of control. Look at all of the different resources and things that are right at our fingertips now. Mm -hmm. You know, we used to have to go to the bank and pay somebody a fee to tell us these things. Now you can turn on any type. Now, I'm not saying... Turn on anybody now, you guys. Don't do that, okay? Make sure that you are with a group or organization or representative that is licensed in their respective areas, of course, to give you good counsel. But the world is our oyster right now, especially in finances. Everybody is trying to do something else right now. What they call the side hustle or whatever. Yeah. You know, your second career, you know, career change. I know that's what I'm going for. I'm ready to move on, you know, and I want to do my own thing. So that's why, you know, I'm, I'm in this field again. And I've always been around numbers and things. I, I really didn't realize it, but I've always been around numbers. Even when I was in college, I worked for the Bursar's office. And so, you know, I was in the collections area then, you know, and, you know, I was young. I, I, didn't, I didn't know God was shaping me then, but he was, you know, and, and, and it's brought me to this point. But like I said, you know, keeping yourself open to information and then actually utilizing it. And like what Vince spoke to about earlier, that's what we do. We make sure that we educate our people and our clients, and then we give them options, solutions, and ways to implement those solutions. It ain't just here, here you go. Go ask Sheree about it. I don't know what to tell you to do. No, we don't do that. You know, we actually walk you through the process. That's a part of our transparency. And people appreciate that. And we love to do it. So, yeah. you know, reach out to and us. Make sure you're getting your information from this point of view, from registered people. They're right. registered with... Um, is, is it the SEC FINRA. and another FINRA. organization? FINRA. And it's FINRA too, right, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they have certain rules and regulations that they have to follow. Um, so my, my suggestion is definitely that. The other suggestion that I have for people is don't try to do it all alone. I think a lot of times we get stuck and someone mentioned this in the chat as well. Are we going to have smaller mastermind sessions where we could talk about things? Yes, we will. Um, we also encourage you one on one to go and talk to somebody. Sometimes you just talking to somebody and having a session with a registered person, it will bring up certain things that's happening in your life or when we have our smaller mastermind sessions, that person is not going to sit there and help you come up with an income statement or a budget and a balance sheet and say, if you did this, this and this, you could free up five hundred dollars a month and move it over here, et cetera. That does require 
um, someone who's a registered financial advisor and financial coach. So I, um, I think a lot of times, this is just reiterating, we try to do things alone. And I think that um, when it comes to financials, I'm not telling you to follow, I'm like Ali, I'm not telling you to follow everybody. But with financials and with your financial life, I think that one is the worst number. <laughs> one being you, one being one investment, one being even sometimes one, only one person you're listening to instead of maybe uh, listening to a couple of different ideas. Um, so I want to um, answer Kevin really quickly, put in the Q&A, what do you think about the new PPP loan criteria exclusively for businesses under 20 people and allowing people with student loan defaults? Many people would qualify if they don't have a registered business. I will say, I know people who have gotten the PPP loan. I, I don't know enough to uh, have a have enough of a conversation with you. I don't know if Vince and Ali or even Tawana uh, know enough about the PPP loans specifically in this aspect of it. Um, well, in, in a general sense, um, the, the, in, in the main thing, especially for the smaller you know, employers in that, uh, you, you have to have a strategy. And I think when you fill out the application, it, it, it speaks to specifically what you're going to be using it for, capital expenditures and so mm -hmm. on and so forth, and, and it has requirements. As long as you meet the criteria and you follow the process, it's a phenomenal scenario. Now, guess what? It's also a loan that's forgiven at the end of a period of time so that you can continue to move things forward. So it's a phenomenal benefit. Mm -hmm. It's just sad that uh, this is the third time around, okay? So the adjustments to the current program really should have been the case <laughs> on the first time around, right? But that's a whole nother, whole nother discussion. Mm -hmm. However, they, they've gotten it on track the way it needs to be. And, and they speak about the small businesses, the mom and pops, you know, the, the small employee, that, that is the heartbeat of our communities. That's mm -hmm. the neighborhood store, you know, not the, you know, although those other enterprises have to move forward as well. But yeah, I said the guidelines that it speaks to uh, are, are pretty straightforward and clear. If you're able to qualify and with the, uh, the, the expanding of the requirements to, to qualify allows more people, even felons that, um, you know, that, that, that don't have, um, uh, let's see, I forget the exact, it, it, it's a wide range, I'll just say that, and it includes all kinds of backgrounds that you can, you know, participate, even that barber, you know, the, the, the cosmetology person, the, the hairstyle, all of that is able to take place, go out there to uh, SD, the Small Business Administration website, and uh, it will actually speak to those details. Yeah. So I, I will say that banks are now fighting with other banks to provide the PPP loans. Now, I do know that from my business circle. Um, I, I have a, um, a friend who switched banks because his first bank did not provide him the PPP loan and he wasn't one of us. Right. I'll say that as well. Like they have no problem. Oh, OK, well, I can go to this bank over here and now banks are like laying out the red carpet. Now, this guy has an insurance brokerage. He's been in business many years, he and his wife, et cetera. So they, you know, they had um, money and, and, and all of that <laughs> um, to show. But, you know, don't be afraid if your bank doesn't have their stuff together to go and and talk to other bankers as well. Um, that is one thing that I will say. Mm -hmm. And, you know, actually, uh, Kevin Stewart responded in the chat and he added that that the, the one disqualifying factor, disqualifying factor in being able to qualify is no financial fraud. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, uh, it's, it's wide open. You know, so it, it's more on an equal playing field and allows people to really benefit from the purpose of the program and what it's designed to actually do. Yeah. Tina Barbara Askew has had her hand up for a while. I'm sorry about that. Oh. Um, oh, yeah. So sometimes people put their hand up. Barbara, did you mean to have your hand up? No, she took it down. Yeah. Okay. I, I didn't think that she meant to have her hand up. So 
Um, yeah. So, all righty then, everybody. Well, thank you so much for participating in today's session. I want to thank our special guests, Vince and Ollie. Um, I want to give the two of you an opportunity to tell people where to find you because we have people listening on different platforms uh, as well. You know, YouTube, Facebook, Periscope. So where can people find the two of you? Right. I did put Go some ahead, information in the chat there. Um, Vince is a registered investment representative, and I have his number and his name in the chat, and I put mine in there also. I'm a financial representative, and um, we both can be found on um, primericaonline.com forward slash my name, <laughs> all lowercase, all together. And uh, Vince is the same too, but I'll let right. him tell you. <laughs> and, and actually, just a slight adjustment to that 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 uh, address. It's it's www.primerica. I'll put it on there. Uh, dot com forward slash in our in our first and, and last name. So hers would be Ali yeah. King, and mine would yeah. be Vince Lane. Mine uh, is new. And, I apologize, guys. Yeah, no, you're fine. <laughs> Uh, and so, uh, and just FYI too, I know because it's on different platforms, I guess I, I'll speak and you may not see the, the chat in the Zoom aspect, but my cell number, direct contact 708-612-5026 and Ali King's direct contact 219-781-1239. Uh, and we definitely appreciate uh, the opportunity to share it because it is about that. And, you know, when we can link arms and unite to, to move things forward and uplift people and, and have a, 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 an environment, a space to empower one another, it makes all the difference in the world. And to Molly, you're absolutely right. You know, uh, it, it totally matters to get folks, you know, be the, be the difference maker, not just in your own life. But those around us in our world, right? Touch them, say, yeah, I know somewhere where we can get some insight on some things. And you can have, you know, uh, uh, personal information dealt with and knowledge and, 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 and understanding. Uh, I, I will make one final comment <clears throat> with respect to exposure. You know, we are a direct result of our previous experiences and exposure. The moment those experiences broaden, the moment the, ex the exposure broadens, guess what? It creates a different belief. Our beliefs widen. And as those beliefs widen, guess what? We make different choices. Had it not been for a new belief, a new understanding, we can't make the new choice. And as a result of those new choices, we have new and incredible outcomes with respect to results. So I love I, that, Vince. I'm, I'm going to just mm -hmm. add to that. Be kind to yourself also, right? Mm -hmm. Because That's when we right. sit in this space of doom and gloom, it's hard for mm -hmm. us to see That's those it. things that Vince is talking about, right? Mm -hmm. It's hard for us to mm -hmm. see the light and to see the future and see all the wonderful things that's ahead of us. So that's stop right. speaking all the doom and gloom into your life. That existence doesn't exist, right? Be mm -hmm. kind mm -hmm. to yourself and definitely um, you know, open yourself up to, to, to what those new opportunities can be. That's right. It, it's light at the end of the tunnel. It ain't a train. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and right. with that, we want to say thank you. We actually ended 715 on the spot. So we want to hey. thank everyone right. for being here tonight. Next two weeks, for the next two weeks, is all equity crowdfunding oh. training, equity crowdfunding 101. So we'll see you awesome. all uh, uh, oh. next Monday, same time, same place. Very Take good. care. Bye.